Hey guys, Legendary Grimlock here, and today we are going to be doing the entirety of the Transformers cosmology. However, before we begin, I'd like to note that we do have some ground rules for this one. Now, simple rule here is that I cannot use any, and I mean any, of the other crossover franchises or the other franchises that are a part of the greater Transformers cosmology. So no Cthulhu Mythos, no 30 Day Vampires, no Ben 10, no Dungeons and Dragons, none of that. All right, we're going to give Transformers mm -hmm. its, <clears throat> excuse me, its time in the limelight. OK, the reason why I'm doing this is because as a content creator, I feel like I have gotten lazy when it comes to, well, the main thing that I've been trying to promote here, which is that transforms are extremely powerful. Now, another rule we are going to have to do here is that I have to go to all the way of the tree of life, meaning I have to go past the omniverse, explain each dimension here or at least pretty much show it then explain it at the same time and go all the way to the highest plane in the multiverse which you guys will see what that is here so without further ado here and as long as you guys understand the rules here we're actually going to start off with something that's very simple in all honesty and that's how the multiverse was created or oh, sorry the omniverse was created how did it all begin where did it start here now this is actually a pretty funny thing right so we start off with a being known as the one the very first cybertronian to exist here and he had a son unicron now unicron was a whole being all right he had both light and darkness within him however the one wanted a another son and he <laughs> cut him in half creating primus however primus had all the good energy while unicron had the negative energy now unfortunately this resulted in primus and unicron fighting and as he as the one banished them they spilled over into the old realms which was basically the first omniverse and during that time there unicron winded up destroying everything in their class and i mean everything every universe every part of it down to its very concepts however primus did wind up defeating unicron and eventually he would go on to not only replace the omniverse with his own but create the guiding hand however the guiding hand had very different visions for how the omniverse should be and this would then lead them to well Kind of like a miniature civil war here. But again, keep in mind, they're all around the same levels as true form Primus and Unicron. So, yeah, that war didn't last too long here. However, everyone went there, I guess you could say separate ways, if you will. I'm quoting it, by the way, because again, they do pretty much exist on the same plane here. And they winded up doing their own things, things excuse me, and creating their own Cybertronian life. However, with Unicron's return enemy, this is where Primus would create the 13 original Primes. And thus had his, well, defenders against Unicron. The rest is history. The Primes go to war with Unicron and the Matrix is created. So now, if anyone wants to know why I'm not talking about Gaia, um, she doesn't come in until very later on in the Transformers cosmology. She like comes after everything is established. So <laughs> she's not a she's not a key player in, you know, the creation of the Transformers cosmology, but she is a key defender of the Transformers cosmology, if that makes any sense here. So um, with that out of the way and with that being said here, we can actually start off with our first part of it, that being the multiverse or a simple multiverse now what is a multiverse in transformers well that's pretty simple a multiverse also known as a universal cluster is basically the continuity now you might say legendary what do you mean by that well every transformers continuity we've watched and read is actually a multiverse yeah i know it's absolutely insane isn't it now each multiverse okay is separated 
by their continuities. Now, what makes up these multiverses, you might be asking here? Well, that's pretty simple. Every game, every comic, and every movie, and TV show, obviously, right? All derive to make one multiverse. But keep in mind this. Keep, keep this in mind. It has to be for that specific franchise. For example, the Bayverse. You see, in the comics and even alternate comics like Titan movie comics and movie adaptation comics, did you know that Jazz was able to one-shot Brawl? Crazy because in the movies, he never did that, right? Again, this goes into the multiverse. And in another continuity or in another universe, if you will, uh, well, sorry, not continuity. Yeah, in another universe, excuse me. <laughs> Jazz beat Starscream and Brawl. You see, each of these franchises is a simple multiverse with their games, movies, comics, TV shows, all that good stuff here. However, each universe is infinite in size, which means that each multiverse is infinite. Get what I mean? It's very interesting here because each multiverse is infinite in size. However, they're all filled with infinite possibilities. A simple thought or action changes how that universe is created, how that universe is made. All because one character, one character from the main line of that continuity changed everything with a simple thought or a simple action, creating a branch universe which is infinite in size comparable to the mainline universe. And it just keeps going with these universes having universes on, you know, branch from them and thus creates the multiverse. Now, here's the thing about a single multiverse or a single continuity. The brand dimensional or the spatial brand, which basically is the genetic makeup of a multiverse, if you will, right? What its dimensional brand is has a max of 17 to 22 spatial dimensions. However, there are arguments for these multiverses being infinite dimensional because of the infinite possibilities, meaning that each multiverse easily, easily is in the high hyperversal tier when it comes to scaling. This means that each multiverse, from even G1 to even Earthspark, right, has a high hyperversal cosmology. It's insane. However, each universe, sorry, each multiverse, excuse me, is wrapped in trans warp energy. Now, trans warp or trans space in general is basically the this colorful void right that just allows you to go from one multiverse to the other and there are even ways to even break through your brand cosmology in order to get to the next multiverse now this is actually pretty interesting because we have to take into consideration that each multiverse, again, is a continuity. Each multiverse is infinite in size. Each multiverse is infinite dimensional with unlimited possibilities. Okay? So take that all into consideration. And you already have a high hyperversal cosmology for these multiverses. Anyone or anything that can destroy these multiverses should be in an outerversal level. However, it doesn't stop there to what these universes or multiverses can be. You see, there are even conceptual universes within the Transformers cosmology. Universes made up of love, cold, hate, resurrection, death, life. The, the basic things, these basic concepts can also be universes with their own Cybertronians, humans, and everything within them. So you have a franchise that contains universes made up of concepts, but it doesn't stop there. Remember the primes earlier? Believe it or not, they have their own dimensions, which are within the Transformers Omniverse. However, 
they transcend the multiverses as some of them just use it as their own toy box. Beings like Quintus Prime, as you saw earlier, are capable of using the realm of life to accelerate and just experiment. However, I know one of the few questions you guys have asked me is about this scan right here, diving into this metaphysical universe by one of the few creators of an avatar of Unicron. Again, it's basically like Unicron giving someone permission to operate on him. Now, metaphysics just pretty much operates on the nature of the mind. Basically, think of basically your dreams, right? That's the best way I could put it. Think of your dreams, right? But you're able to bring things out of your dream and do whatever you want with them. Basically creating your own dimension because of your dreams. Technically, in your dreams, you are in another dimension. <laughs> it's Again, it's absolutely insane what these universes and even multiverses can be made out of. Such as even microverses, which contain, again, microscopic beings, which are beyond space and time. With their universe itself being beyond space and time and infinite in size. So even the smallest universes can be infinite in size. There are also much higher planes in existence, but we'll get into that a little bit here. Because beings like Vector Prime can create the realm of the primes to house their true forms, which are capable of one-shotting everything. So the true forms of the primes are just so powerful that they would one-shot everything that they're trying to protect here. And again, in order to not do that when fighting against Unicron, only saving their true forms for, well, the true form of Unicron, um, Vector Prime created this realm to which... It houses their true forms, and they only bring beings in there that they want to train, such as Optimus Prime. So again, understand this. There are standard multiverses, conceptual multiverses, various infinite individual universes that are created by the primes or other beings that have the ability to create other universes that are made up of either concepts or metaphysical nature or the nature of the mind excuse me or basically dreams <laughs> and then you have the sheer fact that there are realms and even universes beyond the omniverse and beyond space and time now we're not done just yet we have to talk about the higher dimensions and again I'm going to try and list them in order from least to greatest, and I'm going to try and name them all. But keep in mind, there are an infinite amount of dimensions here. You see, the higher realms or these higher dimensions are so high that they make the basic realms look like children. They transcend these multiverses quite casually. Now, again, some of these multiverses do have their own higher dimensions. However, some of these higher dimensions can also be connection points to other multiverses. OK, so remember, each multiverse that already has a high hyperversal cosmology has a higher dimension that transcends those multiverses. You follow me? Let's continue. Now, one of these multiverses or higher dimensions is the Axion Nexus. The Axion Nexus basically operates as kind of like a multiversal hub. It's its own multiverse, but it operates like a like a peace center. It's like a what am I trying to think of? It's like an amusement park, if, amusement park, if you will. Everyone goes there to have fun everyone goes there to chill out and have a good time even versions of megatron tarn and overlord there are as many and here's the thing there are many megatrons in the multiverse as there are sun streakers there are many optimus primes in the multiverse as there are tarns okay there is no one version of the character all right. The next plane we have is Cloud World. Now, Cloud World is above the Axion Nexus. Cloud World operates as a multiversal 
basically police station where the space time police or known as the Autobots basically go around and fight against the Decepticons, Unicron or any other threat that is going to destroy another multiverse. All right. So basically it like like a black ops team of Autobots, if you will. <laughs> the next realm we have is the Alternity Realm. Now, the Alternity Realm is a brand world. You see, this is one of the higher planes in existence when it comes to the Transformers cosmology. Well, again, one of them, remember. <laughs> now, this is important because the Cybertronians here have to be granted access to this plane. That's how high it is. And they have to be granted access by the Primes themselves. Mainly Vector Prime because, again, this is kind of like his plane or his jurisdiction or whatever. But, again, Vector Prime is normally one that gives beings the power to become alternatives and actually gives them the, well, abilities to become true form entities. Which means that they encompass the Omniverse as well. So these beings or this plane of existence should be much higher than the Omniverse. And again, they do this to protect it from Hytherian, which I stated in my Alternity, God, Alternity Optimus Prime <laughs> versus Hell Godzilla video. They are basically on a much higher plane of existence with infinite everything even their true forms are should be infinite in size again just like the primes and just like their creator now this is where we get to the highest plane over the omniverse the realm of the primes a realm that again cannot be reached unless the primes want you to this can even be from the all spark itself here now it's not that high okay it's, it's not that high here but again it is a realm that exists on a much higher level than the ones i just named housing again the true forms of these primes so that again they don't destroy the omniverse by accident which is why they have to lower themselves by using avatars all right now we are going to get into where the guiding hand are but first we have to explain one little thing the tree of life <laughs> now the tree of life is one of the most beautiful things i've ever got to read about and ugh, I, I don't even know where to begin well <laughs> let's start off with the kingdom everything i just explained earlier without the other stuff like ben 10 dungeons and dragons and the cthulhu mythos um that's it the material dimension where everyone is and they don't reach the rest of the tree of life until after they die. You see, sparks are technically the universes that these characters are. And as you guys can see here, they're made up of so many things. They're like miniature macrocosms. The first thing you have is the foundation, which serves as a gateway between the material world and the living world. The first realm, if you will. Then there's the splendor which celebrates the heights and breaths of all creations, instilling an awe with a sheer scale. And this is where we get the description of the sparks. Now, eternity is a vastness from the primordial gra gra ah, gasp of the universe to creaking frozen ends of all the possibilities. Basically, they get to view everything about themselves. And how there are so many things. Then there's the mercy. The understanding. The understanding allows you to understand everything about your cosmology. And it's something just beautiful. And then there's wisdom. Now the funny thing is this is all being described by just two Cybertronians. Rhinox and Megatron. And at the end of it. You reach the Allspark, which basically is an eternal paradise. You go through all these things on your way to this paradise here. However, there is one area that's more unknown in the Tree of Life, and that's the Abyss. 
pure nothingness. However, again, we don't stop there. As overlooking everything is the creator himself, Primus, up on the astral plane, a plane that only a few beings can actually reach here. Now, it is a question on where the astral plane is, but one thing is for certain, it's one of, if not the highest plane in the Transformers cosmology. Now that we've reached the end of this video, I thank you all for pretty much just listening to all this. This was hard work, but I will not take credit for this. If you guys want to, you guys can come on Discord and basically just get to know everyone who's pretty much contributed to this all right there are so many people that i don't really have the time to name all of them ram ranch shockwave um primus every single one of y'all on the discord thank you all for this information now let's talk about one of the few things that should address to i guess you could say power scaling if you will when a character is capable of destroying creation all right now, this would refer to their continuity, as again, the avatars of the primes or most of the characters that are born into that cosmology or into that spatial, well, sorry, ah, into that universal cluster are meant to destroy that cosmology only. It doesn't mean they're going to destroy the omniverse, all right? They are called omniversal threats, yes, but that is because, again, some of these true form entities are omniversal threats, all right? Beings like the Fallen, Unicron, again, they are all capable of destroying the omniverse. However, they are limited by their avatars in this respective continuities that they're in. For example, Bavers Fallen, as you saw earlier, wouldn't be able to destroy the entire Omniverse, as again, that would be basically an entire reach in all honesty. These avatars have to, or at least the primes have to down themselves by their continuity in order to be, I guess you could say, again, not too overpowered. Basically, they have to weaken themselves in order to be, well, <laughs> a part of this continuity it's a rule they all have to follow it even the fallen himself and again unicron is no different just fulfilling his role as he's just a, a malevolent force of nature so yeah that's pretty much it here you guys if you guys want i will be linking my discord down below if you guys want to talk if you guys want to you know chat let me know if you guys want to vc Again, let me know and I will schedule some time for y'all to answer y'all questions, to give you guys, um, you guys want any advice or anything? Um, yeah, I, I can help you with that. Or if you have any questions, again, just come on VC and please be respectful to everyone else there. So again, um, yeah, that's going to be all for today, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to your friends. And let me know if you guys want to see more of this kind of video format where I actually do use videos or put video games in the background and stuff here. I wanted to try it because I saw my homie Nothing Important here um, always doing it and stuff. So I'm just like, mm, let me... Let me give it a shot, you know, let, let me put some of my old gameplays in the background just to kind of simplify and stuff here. So, yeah, be sure to um, go subscribe to him, right? Because, again, one of the best Destiny scalers and, um, you know, Warframe scalers out there. I, I mean, I, I don't really see a lot of people really doing it, but he is one of the best, if not the best itself. But anyway, that's going to be all today, you guys. Please comment down below, like, and subscribe, and share it to your friends. This is Legendary Grimlock, and I hope you guys have a blessed day. Peace.